Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Ricoh XR2S. Uh, it was made in 1979. It's aperture priority or metered manual. Uh, it uses a K-mount, the Ricoh version. Some tiny differences, but uh, essentially it's a K-mount. Uh, it has ISO settings from 12 to 3200 and has this little silver lock button that you have to push. That way you're not accidentally monkeying with your film speed. Uh, the same dial, uh, it looks like the same dial, has plus or minus uh, two stops uh, exposure compensation. You lift this ring around the ISO setting and that's in full stops. It has a vertically traveling metal shutter I believe it was made by Copal. Uh, it's a pretty nice shutter. Uh, it goes from 8 seconds to a thousandth of a second when you're in auto mode, aperture priority mode. And when you're shooting metered manual, it goes from 4 seconds to one thousandth of a second. And it's stepless when you're in automatic, so, you know, if it calls for a 263rd of a second, that's what it'll do, um, but it's normal stops when you're shooting in manual. The sync speed is up to 125th of a second, um, but when you're uh, shooting in auto with a dedicated flash, it automatically sets the sync to a 90th of a second. It's powered by two commonplace 1.5 volt batteries got LR44s in here right now so that's always a plus because this does need uh, batteries except for the two mechanical settings which is bulb and X which is a 90th of a second which is way over here by four seconds rather than being between 60 and 125 here. When you're shooting in manual like the uh, KX that are reviewed um, you can see the f-stop at the top of the viewfinder, it's this tiny little window here, and it's actually looking at the aperture label on top of the lens. And the blue needle to the right, where it's showing the shutter speeds, um, is your selected shutter speed, and then the black is what it's metered. So then you chase the needle either by changing your f-stop or changing your shutter speed. Um, when you're in auto mode, set it to auto over here, uh, it shows you what speed it's selected to meter properly given the aperture you've selected. And when you're in auto, the uh, shutter button won't turn. There's this little green button on the front so that you don't accidentally take it off of auto. And it doesn't spin all the way around. So you can't go from auto directly to bulb. You've got to twist it all the way around. The winder standoff enables the shutter button. When it's in, it won't press. And it also enables the, uh, what speed am I on? Four seconds, sorry about that. Um, it enables the meter and enables the shutter button. It's got a viewfinder blind built in, which is kind of nice uh, for if you're using the self-timer, doing long exposures. So you don't get any stray light coming through back here. Kind of a nice feature. But kind of rounding out the features, this uh, silver button right here is your depth of field preview. So it stops the lens down. Normally uh, you're composing and it's metering at, at the widest aperture. It has a multiple exposure system with a lock. If you want to shoot multiple exposure, you slide this little lever to the left it's a little hard to see, but then it's red. And then when you're winding, you have to hold in this button. So it's a two-handed operation. Maybe that's on purpose. They don't want you to do that by accident. And I'm still in four seconds. 1977's uh, XR2 was essentially the identical camera to this, but it did not have the contacts and the mechanical fitting for uh, attaching a motor wind to the camera. 
There's a really cool article from the 1979, uh, I don't remember what month, but Popular Photography Magazine. They do a really in-depth report on this. These guys used to tear down cameras when they were reviewing them. You don't see that kind of stuff anymore. So with this, I got a really nice kit. Got the body, got the dedicated flash, which has this little contact pin so that the flash can tell the body to set the shutter speed to a 90th of a second. And it also enables a flash ready indicator in there. Um, I got a uh, Pentax lens with it. It's a really sweet 50 millimeter f1.4. And then for taking pictures of the birdies in the yard, I got a nice K-mount Tokina zoom. It's a push-pull zoom um, with some macro capabilities. It's uh, 100 to 300 millimeters. And uh, one thing that's nice, it's f5.6, not super bright, but it maintains that throughout the entire zoom range. You know, most modern zooms, the more you zoom, the smaller aperture you get. So this is constant. That's a really nice lens. I like this camera. It's got that kind of rugged, tough look to it. It's angular, but without having that weird kind of angles for no good reason aesthetic uh, that a lot of camera makers used in the 80s and 90s, sort of that pseudo-futuristic look. Um, it's a nice blend of features and it's really easy to use. One thing that I forgot, it's got a 10 second self timer. The uh, lever's broken off of it. I haven't used it. I don't know if that causes the mirror to lock up or not. Um, it's kind of an aside. Normally I shoot right eyed and while I was using this camera, because you have to have the, the lever in the standoff to enable things. I got something in my eye. I was trying to shoot um, left-eyed. So I understand why people don't like this now because you're either smacking your glasses or you're poking yourself in the eye. So, you know, it's still a feature that I like when I can shoot right-eyed, uh, but I do understand people's complaints about it now. So I'm going to run some black and white through this guy. I really do like it. So I will see you then.